good evening everyone it's good to see you almost like a house i'm uh, much more energized looking at the crowd i'm sorry actually today i got delayed normally i come here early and get to know each other but luckily we had a wonderful you know discussion the day before yesterday and uh, so so what we are going to have is i just tell you the structure very quickly the um, here it's not like a debate format it's like a panel discussion and uh, we all agree you know luckily <laughs> that it needs to be transformed right so there's no debate whether it needs to be transformed or not need to be you know transformed it's only a question of where and how and that's where we will have a lot of you know agreements and disagreements so we are having a panel members um, you know it's like very much covered a panel members from uh, industry a jai shri from cognizant and um, she has um, uh, done a lot of things a meeting a lot of fresh young you know young graduates and so on then right you have um, you know viru uh, viru prakash from infosys and uh, he's uh, not only from the industry but is also he had a very good uh, experience and i you know some part of his life is dedicated to uh, entrepreneurship so and we have uh, professors sanjay and arun and uh, one from uh, great lakes great and uh, and uh, iit uh, chennai and uh, he have lot of you know experience going around the globe and you know is uh, more than a decade is again he is uh, pretty much dedicated himself for uh, the education institutions and uh, arun is actually a professor in, um, in management studies and we have two students and uh, aishwarya and uh, saptashri from iit and great lakes um, mba pretty much oh sorry btech <laughs> So now looking at the balance, um, yes, I spoke to her. Um, we had some quick chat um, a few days ago. Student, couple of industry experts and entrepreneur, uh, professors. I myself, uh, an industry many many years ago. Now it's called as many many years ago, more than twelve years ago. It was with uh, Oracle and uh, Wipro. <laughs> the time, you know, flies just like that. Last twelve years, actually, I'm an entrepreneur myself. Um, Pickup systems focusing on uh, software products. So with that, let me um, kick start and then ask um, uh, first round. Um, I'm going to spend about two minutes. They will give uh, opening thoughts, opening remarks. So it will be like an unstructured conversation. In middle of the conversation, there will be a Q and A for the audience, and then the conversation will continue. And end of the conversation, there will be one more. Q and A. Then after the Q and A, I'll come and summarize my thoughts. Uh, later on, I come to we come back and why I use this picture for the title. I am sure that most of you are thinking something. You know what is the insect got to do with you know transforming education? Uh, I'm not explain it right now, but I definitely will come back and explain you know why I actually display this particular you know site. Now. I think if you really look at, I am looking at not only the education, look at education, it has a lot of connects, we have to connect so many dots, the, all the dots need to be connected, if one is not doing well and everything else will be affected. You know, we may think that it is working, but if we look at from a different perspective, it is all end of the day perception matters, right, and we can still live without engineering, you know, um, colleges, we can still live without a uh, dental you know colleges and so on but it's not a question of whether living or not living but looking at the whole as a globalization right we are not looking at just india today and india in 40 uh, before 19 you know 47 right we're looking at the global as a whole and then you look at india you know where we are in terms of education and other related things and where we have to make a change so that that small butterfly flipping its wing can make a massive transformation positive sense towards creating a greater you know and a stronger India, right? So, now, first of all, I think look at you know success. 
the success is ultimately again it's a relative term right and the different people means that success means different sometimes success means you need to be a, a google founder right sometimes the success could be a founder of say wipro prem ji whatever so different things in everybody is a great leader right the context are different the environment that we are playing with is different and now we can't say that india is like a, a separate country because 1991 i think we became plugged ourselves into a global era right pretty much and we can't say that no, i will not compete with the us and i will not compete with uh, say singapore is you know i will not compete with china and things like that so our competitor our uh, background is much bigger right now and we need to understand how to balance education employability employment entrepreneurship and excellence is all interconnected and if you do not deliver excellence right entrepreneurship might you know uh, fail and if education doesn't bring an excellence in terms of research and so on the entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurship may not succeed and if there is no entrepreneurism if you don't take entrepreneurism very very seriously and there will not be an employment and when there is no employment there is no need to have any college right so it is a very not a complex thing is simple thing to understand at a very very high level these massive dots need to be connected and student need to think holistically a professor needs to think holistically and employee need to think holistically you employee cannot say that you know it's my job i will do it better because the way the employee is performing it depends on the employment creation in india one employee can make a change if one employee comes up with a wonderful idea and cognizant a create a transformation there will be 10000 more jobs in in india right so let's not take anything as a small or i'm not going to compare which is bigger which is smaller and everything is equally important and then then i'm coming to i want to slightly extend not beyond because we are not going to you know you should discuss the issue of sustainability here but we need to understand today as an as far as the employment is concerned 3 years back from 2004 to 2008 and 2009 things were different and 2000 say 12 and 2000 13 and things are different right kind of happiness of the people coming out of college in 2004 to 2011 7 years is a golden era is different and today i don't know how many students can actually smile coming out of college right now looking at the whole thing are we can we say that you know, it's my job is only to become a you know b degree only to get you know jobs in cognizant or wipro right and can i say that you know, i'll throw plastics anywhere in the place i don't care you know what happens so my by job will be taken care by the god till i die right so can we plug an individual ourselves from the whole ecosystem and say that you know I, i'm not going to care about my neighbor i'm not going to care about my professor i'm not going to care about my campus i'm not going to care about my employer so this interconnections the huge interconnection need to understand and you can also say you know you cannot say that you know i don't care about politics it matters who rules it's our choice whether the moraj jaisa type of leader or it's like a, a, a you know rahul i mean um, narsimha rao kind of you know leader right i am not getting into politics here but we need to understand the whole thing and then see all this ecosystem then how this whole thing you know um, you know uh, flourishes now very quickly before you know give me a <coughs> you know the uh, asking the panel members to get i'm just setting the stage for the whole thing and sometime back i was reading uh, it's like a sarcasm actually i wouldn't say it's a serious article that the, there is a great opportunity for human pollinators are we meant for that right and there is another article i was reading that is in the world pop you know food growth one third of food it's actually depend upon the honey bees and we are losing honey bees in millions right so now whether you call it as a threat or an opportunity if it's a threat you'll go back and look at the sustainability and ecosystems right whatever that you do and if you consider it as an opportunity you don't care what it is i'll become a honey bee myself right right you, it's it's up to you right so now when the honey bees are disappearing there is not going to be a pollination when there is not a pollination there is not going to be food when there is no food that we are going to die 
no matter where we are working, how much you are getting, whether you, you can't eat uh, US dollars and survive. So in that sense, I think looking at those things, you know, are we calling that as an opportunity or something beyond that? We need to take things very, very seriously. And there is also a business opportunity for renting out or leasing out honeybees. <laughs> because in certain forms, that the honeybees is not there around, right? And then they actually, it's like a business, they bring like, you know, it's like the laborers, they bring in like millions of honeybees, you know, rent it out for, maybe for a week or a month or something and they'll do pollination. I don't know what, how they do it. I've not seen it in my eyes. It's just, it's like, you know, reading. And then they bring all the honeybee back to their places. So they are also like a business, right? So we need to understand the bigger things. Now, three statistics I'm going to show very quickly so that we all on the same page. And I'm not going to say that, you know, whether the 10 percent is correct or 15 percent is correct or 14 percent is correct. But in the bottom line, it's a very, very, very low percentage of the MBA graduates are employable. And then there is a very, very, very low percentage of engineering graduates are employable. I have read the statistics in so many different things. Only the percentage varies between like 15 and 25. Right? But it is not a big, you know, variation. But it is something very, very pathetic. Something very, very painful that we need to understand. If something is really, really a problem and is going to be a disaster, it's already become a disaster slowly in the last couple of years. Because if I say we are, we are discussing the same thing, Two years back, nobody will believe. Today, people will believe because situations outside are entirely different. Sometime back, I've come from a village. Sometime back, you know, I mean, I got a call from my, uh, you know, cousin and said that he talked to this person. He just completed an MBA, and uh, he needs some help and job. And uh, when I'm dealing with an MBA graduates, I've gone through so many B graduates in the last 15 years, and uh, sorry, 12 years. And then I was talking to the MBA graduates, um, you know, um, a couple of months back. And uh, listening to him, I was talking to him a half an hour. He was making call from our hometown. Because he come from a hometown, I spend more time, you know, discussing with him exactly who you are and what you know and where you are and what kind of jobs you are looking at. I, I found out something. One, he cannot speak good English. He cannot speak English at all. Now, if a B graduate doesn't speak English, I don't care. Because I asked him to write a Java program. But if an MBA graduate doesn't speak English, what can he do? He can only go and sell biscuits in a small little pawn shop in a village. Do you understand me? Right? So now, the very basic, I'm not going to get into the details, right? The one, only one point because of time, because I'm going to give a very quick introduction. You know, how can you have an MBA graduates in this country, in this place? I'm not talking about two or three, you know, elite engineering, you know, business schools. There are lots of business schools out there. Right from my uh, hometown village all the way to the center of, you know, the capital of the country or the capital of our state. Now, why are they getting into an MBA course at all? So, all the things you need to look at it. What are they trying to do? And who is going to give them those kind of, you know, responsible uh, outcome? So, is it something uh, education is a business without a consumer protection? Right? And you can always say that, you know, I taught them they didn't learn. But you can't say that I gave them a TV, but it didn't work. The fundamental shift is, I think, you cannot go and pinpoint an education because they give knowledge and it's intangible. There is no physical transfers, right? It's my ability of my brain and mind and heart tells you know, how much I understand, how much I don't. So we cannot really take them to a consumer court. If we really want to take them to a consumer court, 80% of the graduates, more than 10 lakhs people, a million students, you can take all the education to the Good. It's not going to happen. So look at all the things. You know, who is responsible for making sure a student is actually highly employable so that the person is makes the bread and butter and runs his family. Coming to the global era, I was going through the entire list, many, many different lists. Right? I saw uh, one top mo in the topmost Indian college. You know, what is the rank? Can you guess? The top, huh? 150? 80? 234. Now, when when somebody, the media person took the mic and went near the politician, and asked them, you know, what is this? Not even a one institute in the top 200. You know, what is the uh, reply? 
very politicians are very very smart i tell you and nobody can be smarter than a politician you know what they said you know what their criteria is different <laughs> and that criteria will not work for <laughs> india look at the beautiful you know answers i don't know where they got educated from now the another google employee you know vice president they says that i don't care about the gpa the normal interview process is useless it's not my what is actually is actually the google head of acha right i'm not talking about a normal google employee it's not my statement it's a top most you know uh, co- you know company the hr person is saying that now i'll open up right let's go one round it's only a setting up stage in terms of giving a statistics some background where we are and where we need to go i'm sure this experts are here to give all kinds of ideas so that we can go back with some implementable and actionable intelligence right uh, bring in some transformation whatever the circle of influence that we belong to right we may be a professor student or we may be an expert or an entrepreneur or we could be even a parent it could be anybody i'm sure that all of us have a role to bring in certain transformation I'd like to start with jayshri please thank you uh, lakshman pillai uh, sir uh, thanks for uh, i am jayshri sridharan thanks for giving me this opportunity to share uh, you know from my experience as to what i uh, understand with respect to this topic yes we know this topic of uh, uh, discussion today right um, the most students coming out of the higher education today are not employable it is indeed true and the fact goes like this and we we just saw all the examples uh, that that sir really put together right google says that they don't really care about the gpa but what what do we really do right the institutions the as a recruiter you know being a recruiter for the past uh, decade and so we have been looking at the gpa we have been looking at the university top ranks and recruiting people and i myself i have seen the sea change in the way the students have been able to deliver uh, uh, you know projects within the organization when they are on board right it is about the capability and i am talking about not uh, so many years back just like 7 years 8 years back the what students that we recruit probably. the top students top rank students are, uh, are are definitely better than what i see today uh, you know the top, the top rank students of today's world right what is the problem and where is the problem so we know that these uh, students who are really successful in their uh, institutions in an academic institutions are conditioned to you know deliver their best in a particular environment in a, in a particular situation and I, i would call it as a boxed situation when they come out of it they really are not able to cater to an address or face the change right and we all know today the world is world is moving towards a rapid change and the changes are there to stay right so we see that the students are not able to cater to that so we have several examples in the past which really says that this boxed condition of uh, you know delivering academics is not really worked one of the important examples that i would quote is that we would all know right innovation leader steve jobs look back at his history what is institutions at academic uh, uh, what is the institution really delivered to him nothing right so i will leave it to the table at table at this point to say are academics uh, are the educational institutions really um, uh, teaching passion right for the passionates for, for for the people to deliver passion or are we really looking at a boxed way of delivering theories right making the students learn theories i will just leave it there at the table and we can discuss forward i would also like to share another point of view but i will look for another opportunity definitely i mean conversation yeah it's only introductory thank you uh, hello everyone i am saptarshi from the department of electrical engineering iit madras uh, it feels great to be a part of this panel um, so talking about the topic uh, before coming here last night i had a a small scale panel discussion in my hostel itself i was talking to my friends just to get their opinion what they think about this so we talked for some time and at the end of it we came up with a few problems that uh, that we face in the indian scenario especially in iit considered to be a premier college but even then it has got lots of problems which are probably not seen to the rest of the world 
the major problem that we found was uh, the course content is lot a lot of theoretical stuff in it when we get into iit we want to be an engineer we feel we'd be building up things but when we actually get into it we see it's full of theories formulas which we do not know when we are going to apply there's lot less of uh, hands on activity that is a part of the curriculum of course student can pursue their own interests that's a different issue so things get boring after a certain point of time students stop uh, giving interest to their course content so this just goes away and once the basics are not clear of course uh, the person wouldn't be fit for employ employment to add to that another problem is uh, students the indian students are not well versed with uh, the professional ethics that takes the certain amount of code of conduct that anyone is expected to follow to add to it communication and also cognitive skills so these are uh, some of the skills which the employers look for and which are missing to the vast majority of the students in the indian higher education colleges and the third thing that we pointed out that we picked up last night was the reservation system many of us feel that the reservation system that is prevalent in the indian education system is ruining the quality of the education and uh, i think this is a topic that we can talk about and with this i'd like to pass on thank you uh, good evening everybody i am sanjay sarkar from uh, i'm a faculty at great lakes institute of management uh, today's topic is about uh, the quality of education and employability uh, i don't know if uh, employability is a necessary uh, criteria for measuring the quality of education but at the same time uh you know it's a parameter which is easily measurable so we can comfortably use it as uh, the effectiveness of an education system uh when you look at the statistics it's quite frightening actually in the indian context we have got 350 universities 18000 colleges 3 million graduates and depending on whose survey you believe somewhere between 47% to 85% of them are unemployable if you ask an employer or recruiter they will tell you that 90% of them do not have enough communication skills 84% of them do not have analytical skills or cognitive skills uh obviously we have somewhere uh, a quantity versus uh, quality issue and i think that you know that given our population and i am quite sure that uh even if you ask for the chinese the same thing will happen that if they actually looked into it that uh, you will not find a single solution a ready made solution for this quantity versus quality problem uh, i come from an educational institution right that's where both arun and me we have decided to make our career so a uh, couple of things that i might say uh, may sound quite defensive but we do have a point of view see for example uh, jashi talks about or talked about steve jobs fact of the matter is i think that these evidence of are anecdotal if you look at the entire 21st century possibly you'll find only one steve jobs it doesn't tell you anything uh almost all the time we talk about bill gates being a college dropout what we don't realize is he's one of the few people in the world to have scored a perfect score on his sat still so the thing is it's not that he would have been a college failure and basically when we are talking about the issue of higher education issue of employability obviously there are gaps but at the same time uh, if suppose i said the solution is for 3 million graduates to drop out of college and start being entrepreneurs i don't think uh, that could be a solution either uh, in terms of entrepreneurship we do make uh, a whole lot of uh, you know effort and now to a great extent almost every institution they say that they want to focus on entrepreneurship uh i am personally not still very convinced that entrepreneurship is a sufficient condition for employability except the fact that uh or everybody wants to become an entrepreneur but at the same time i do think that possibly awareness or study of entrepreneurship creates some kind of an attitude or behavioral consciousness which helps somebody become a more successful manager uh that's where i think uh, the issue is and the last thing you know before i Uh, give it to Ishwarya. Is the issue of research? We have focused up, you know, uh, a lot on a to- lot of the time. Every time you have an education panel, we talk about the lack of research in India, the Indian com- uh, educational context. Uh, 
I am not completely sure that when you are talking about the issue of employability in higher education, research has any relevance at all. Research is about knowledge creation. It's fundamental research. And I really do not believe that 3 million graduates should be uh, you know, exposed to the fruits of fundamental knowledge creation. It's not necessary for them to be employable. So when you look at it, you know, uh, Arun comes from IIT Madras, he can pay more A on it. They have got a whole lot of fundamental research going on, but that's really for a very, very niche proportion of students anywhere on the any, anywhere in the world, and that India should not be any exception. Uh, we should not be under the impression that uh, you know uh, a standard college which just uh, is trying to produce uh, bachelors in engineering or arts or uh, commerce, whatever it is, uh, should be focusing on research. If the only effect of research is updation of students' knowledge, faculty's knowledge, curriculum, in that case, whether you do research or you are updating your knowledge or you are uh, contemporary with your awareness of a subject or a topic, I think that's good enough. So I'll just stop here and I'll give it to Aishwarya. Oh, very good evening. Let's work. Uh, I'm Aishwarya, a student of management from the Great Lakes Institute of Management, Chennai. Uh, when reading up on this topic, I just came across something uh, very interesting uh, said by our very own former president, Dr. Abdul Kalam. He said that the problem that faces India is not so much about unemployment as it is about unemployability. So that sort of reinstates the importance of the topic that we are discussing today. Uh, given that uh, the panel members who have already uh, spoken enough about the problems, uh, I would like to uh, cite a few uh, examples from Great Lakes and talk about possible solutions. Uh, purely from a management graduate perspective, given that I am a management student and would be in a better place to talk about it than anything else. Uh, the first uh, thing in my view which is very important is a curriculum which is up to date and is keeping with market trends. Uh, because an, uh, an employer would like any day like to pick uh, a graduate from a school which has a curriculum in tune with what the industry wants rather than an outdated curriculum. Uh, in this context what uh, Great Lakes has uh, done and has achieved is that our curriculum apart from uh, a traditional MBA based on uh, the functional domains which all other schools have also has a special thrust on emerging markets. Uh, so uh, for all of us know for obvious reason that uh, the market and the industry is shifting focus towards uh, emerging markets uh, away from the traditional so-called developed markets and uh, employers would look for people with relevant skills in that area. So when a graduate comes out with uh, relevant knowledge in that domain, vis-a-vis -vis another graduate who does not have it but could be trained, I'm sure an employer would prefer a person with relevant knowledge. So that's point one on keeping the curriculum updated. And point two, I feel is that uh, there needs to be a constant dialogue between the industry and the world of academia from time to time to ensure that both of them are uh, on the same page with respect to expectations. And that is also in a way taken care of at Great Lakes. And uh, we have a day uh, reserved for uh, industry interface every Thursday. We have experts from uh, different domains, different functional areas from different industries addressing us. So. Those are the points that with which I would like to begin. Thank you. Excellent, Viru. Uh, it's time for three minutes. Uh, it's middle, maybe. Huh? We can give opening remarks and. Hey, I want to start with that actually, for a reason. With which slide? Uh, uh, first, uh, second one. Because. Uh, this one. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Second. Second. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to start with a uh, note about. Uh, the entire thing about my education, knowledge or whatever. Uh, my entire inspiration is uh, Professor R. Anantan. He is the founder of the Physics Society. Uh, I am going to talk more about, uh, you know, not the curriculum, not the industry or whatever it is, but I am going to talk more about the foundation. Uh, people are not thorough in foundation, the basics and how the education system is spoiling the foundation, which makes people unemployable. So I'm going to just make it very brief here and then I'm going to pass it on to the next person. I have a three minute speech on this, uh, which I'll do it in the next round. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good evening. I am Arun Kumar. I am from IIT. I am a faculty in the Department of Management Studies at IIT. I will start with an anecdote or I will sort of add on to what Mr. Lakshman started with. Lakshman said that only 10 percent of the graduates and MBA graduates are employable or 20 percent of the MBA graduates are employable etc. Five years or ten years down the line we are going to see only 10 percent of PhDs are employable. <laughs> Why is it so? Because what is the mandate as of now? The mandate to most of the institutions which do research as of now is China is producing 30,000 PhDs every year. So India has to produce 30,000 PhDs every year. So that is the mandate and there is a pressure to increase the number of PhDs. So five years down the line I wouldn't be surprised if an another forum you are going to present the same picture instead of MBAs you are going to replace with PhDs. <laughs> right? I mean, so what I am trying to bring out here is trying to bring out from two different perspectives. One from the policy maker perspective, not in the employability of students etc is there. What happens to the student? I mean MBA is a craze, everybody goes in for an MBA, fine I want to get a job but for all you know he or she may not even be suited for it. I mean employability factor comes in later, Number pr primary to that is whether a candidate who sort of graduates, I mean whether it is an engineering or an MBA etc, do we have that kind of opportunities ready for him or her before we even create so many institutions out there. I am mean, looking at much more from the macro level, more from the policy perspective, not even from the ground level education system out here. Very simple example, let us take aerospace engineering or let us look at naval architecture. The number of graduates in the country who sort of pass out with an aerospace engineering degree or a naval architecture degree, we do not have so many opportunities in these fields at all. So where are they going to find employment and then finally we will say they are unemployable. But the fact of the matter is basically we do not have opportunities out there. I mean even if you look at technical education, let us look at, I mean forget about education, let us even look at pilot training. About 150 people graduate with pilot training every year in the country. As of today if you look at there are 1500 pilots who are qualified, who have a flying license, who are, un, who are unemployed. In fact they have a very strong association. I mean unemployed pilots, they have a very strong association which is, which, which is doing a lot of work, which is fighting with the government for some concessions etc. So again, what are we talking about? Are they unemployable or do we not, is it that we do not have opportunities to employ them? Now, where is the question? I mean, that is what uh, I would sort of look at, uh, I would sort of uh, look at that macro level and then try to focus my uh, point of view uh, from that angle. Second aspect is more on the individual level. Individual level, again, basically the basic craze part of it. Somebody is employed, somebody is an MBA, like everybody wants to be an MBA. I mean, even the policy makers, what happens in MIT, you showed that uh, none of the Indian institutions are in the ranking of 260 or 270 etc. But what are we trying to do? MIT does something, so IIT should do it. If IIT does something, Anna University does it. If Anna University does it, some other institution does it, right? That is how we are going out. But are we looking at something that is what is relevant for the country as of now, what is relevant for India, what is relevant for the society now and then focusing our, sorry, focusing our research. No, I do not think we are. Maybe that is the direction we, we should move in and that could sort of answer many of the questions what you have. I think I will just pause it on. Wonderful here. provocation and uh, so do you have, you know, panelists, do you have any questions to each other uh, based on what they have said uh, so far? Any specific questions? Okay. Let us introduction, I just very quickly, uh, I have seen so many scenarios right after the exams, they do not know what they learnt. It is like writing on the water. So, is it an education? Because the other day I was interviewing somebody like 45 minutes because my cousin asked me to things. The moment I went beyond what is Java, he said, sir, I forgot, sir. <laughs> I am not even talking about APIs and you know other thing. I just went beyond what is Java and he is just fresh out of his exam center. Right? It is not like you know two year break or three year break, just out of college. So are we really talking about an exam, mark driven, right, or GPA driven in that other sense and then after the exams you do not know what exactly you learnt and what wrote or it is something like a mugging where people you know put the information once in their mind and they will remember it forever and it sometimes it will be hard to unlearn, it will be hard to you know change, right. The ones they change the definition of something, that's it. This is what I learned, this is it. This is my school of thoughts kind of thing. Yeah, are we talking about this is the kind of education? Are we really talking about an education that actually completely go inside the campus and 
empty your mind. Make sure when you come out, you know, you are completely open and fresh for, you know, your own perspective, thinking, and it's something different from a robot kind of model. It's all questions, right? I mean, it's like stages. I'm not saying this is important or that's important. Sometimes I have to remember data. I can't say that, you know, give me my Google, I search and find out what the data is, right? But is it like a memorization is the only important thing, right? Or you need to, how do you need to balance all the things and, and how many of knowledge that you actually learn will stick to you, will be useful, it's something relevant if you are not really going to apply it. And that's where you also mentioned about, like, you know, career is one dot, curriculum, and then that your competency interest. Sometimes that, today what happens is you have to learn 40 subjects in BE, like, you know, 8 semester, 8 into 5, 40 subjects. And all you need is the three subjects actually to become employable. And the other day I was giving a talk in college and there is a principal sitting in the stage, he got a little annoyed actually, but I was, because I am always, you know, kind of not diplomatic and brutally honest, and tell to the 300 students in front of me, told them that to get your piece of paper, which I said is showing in the previous slide in the holding, to get that piece of paper, you mug up 40 subjects, right, to get your life, focus on only three or four subjects, so that you can actually go deeper, because there is a lot of research that shows that, you know, if you want to really become, you know, relevant, expert, you have to spend 10,000 hours, right, you sometimes, you also mentioned it in one of the discussion, 10,000 hours is what it takes to make somebody competent. And where do we collaborate, what kind of collaboration is actually taking place? And are we really talking about going full robo, or at some point in time, are we also preparing people to get terminated on their own? Right? Are you going back to the industrial era, where I make a welder, a welder, maybe most of them retire as a welder. If I make a carpenter, they may retire as a carpenter. They will not only retire as a carpenter, they will also make their son as a carpenter. Right? So now, are we really creating a robot? Is that school today and education today is meant for the knowledge era today or still continuing the industrial and factory kind of era, making factories of people? Are focusing on you know one thing uh, you know doing the same thing and again and again rather than trying to use trying to use a human potential. The problem is it is not also doing that. Huh? Through it. <laughs> if it had been doing that, hmm. uh, you would not. Employability issues come back. That was one interesting point. So now I think uh, because I kick start with a couple of questions. Based on Dr. You know Sanjay mentioned and picked up randomly, right? I mean it's not that one I hate <laughs> most or what like most. So now, if you ask me, I'm looking at one of the statistics that shows that India is 64th in innovation, right? So when you're talking about India is 64th in innovation in the world, where there's a lot of small, small, tiny countries are right now above you, including Singapore. Now, whether that innovation as a research, I see the research people as the freedom fighters. Something close to it. I'm not saying they have to survive and die without seeing the benefits. Something like a freedom fighter they not only, you know, they can survive, but also they can make millions of people survive because of their research. Let's take, uh, I'm not getting into Montserrat kind of, you know, whether it's right or wrong, but look at, you know, uh, India, I mean, U.S., pharmaceutical, they're number mm -hmm. one. IT, they're number one. Now, we remember Steve Jobs today, but you don't remember Kenningham Ritchie. And he only gave me a job. <coughs> right? And, right, we don't remember him, actually. He also died and Steve Jobs also died, there is a hundred million people responded to rest in peace for Steve Jobs and not even few for the other person. But for me, that I would look at, I love Steve Jobs so much, but also looking at Kenny Amrich as a god for me. Right? Right out of, you know, um, a college and he created a C and, you know, Colonel, something, the selfishness, selfless character, right? He created something that is where the millions of people benefited out of this particular research that he is going through. We can give a lot of examples. So looking at that factor, if, and take pharmaceutical, Pfizer, top one, actually is in the US. Let's take education research. Let's take product management, it's rooted out of the US, right? Let's take a mobile phone, it's all coming from there. And who makes billions and billions of dollars and why our current account deficits is actually, is close to 70 billion dollars. And do you think that the $70 billion in current account deficit can be addressed by 
research, do we take research that seriously to, to address that huge gap? I'm not really talking about giving 10,000 people jobs or 1,000 people jobs. Now, how do you feel? Let's talk with uh, Dr. Uh, you know, Sanjay, then I'll ask you another you know, opinion also. How important is research for our country? See, as far as innovation is concerned, uh, like you said, pharmaceutical, uh, or if you actually look at R&D spending as part of corporate budgets in India, it is minuscule. It's hardly worth talking about. Absolutely. It's not necessarily the lack of personnel. You know that uh, I don't think necessarily that we are lacking in innovation necessarily because uh, of the fact you know, that we don't have enough trained people. I think uh, one of the major issues is, if you look at almost all companies, they are, we are much more comfortable doing generics uh, with, uh, you know, almost a guaranteed rate of return, rather than uh, spending uh, billions on uh, a uh, discovery of an uncertain molecule. That's how, uh, if you look at across the board, almost across all industries, that's what it has been. Uh, so, I don't think it's necessarily an issue of education. This is, uh, or employability or skills issue. Uh, because the same people, they go abroad or whatever, you know, they're innovating and so on. That is one part. Uh, second thing is, in terms of, you know, this is something you said, I, Arun also said, uh, in an indirect way, even Saptarshi said, this whole issue about employability and so on, uh, why do we necessarily need so many graduates? All of us, I can, I'm absolutely certain, uh, in our own daily life, to find a plumber or electrician, we have to ask 30 people. And we'll all get the same number. <laughs> As if in the whole of Chennai, there are three electricians and two carpenters. On the other hand, have we ever tried actually asking any parent as to who would want their parents to become, rather children, to become uh, a carpenter or a electrician or a plumber. On the other hand, you go to any large real estate company, you go to Marg, you go to, uh, you know, the Akshay group, you go to DLF, they are going to tell you today the biggest problem they face, you know, in finishing their real estate projects, everything is stuck because they can't find an electrician or a plumber. So the whole issue of you know, just to take on what Arun is saying, the issue of uh, employability, rather the right channeling of employability. Are we actually, you know, there are issues in terms of the education choices people make, in our society at least, which has something to do with where everybody gets involved. Parents, peer groups, uh, including marriage prospects, Right? I mean, even I think BharatMatrimonia.com is, has got more influence as to what you choose as exactly. uh, your specialization compared to <laughs> what you can actually do. I mean, if you remember that scene in Three Idiots, the guy is born, right? And the dad says, well, this, my son should be an engineer. It doesn't matter if you are going to be a, you know, you could paint as better than Picasso. It's irrelevant. Exactly. Great, uh, sir. So, a lot of the time, I think, you know, these issues do play a part here. Wonderful. Sir, I'll come back, uh, sorry, uh, I'll come back uh, to that, yeah. So before getting into the continuation of that question, I have uh, questions based on what you mentioned. You mentioned about quality versus quantity. Yeah, sure. And uh, so in that sense, uh, have you ever thought of using, embracing technology to drive uh, quantity? Um, for example, today if you look at uh, Khan Academy, actually, is doing, creating a revolution across the globe. Right, where uh, Microsoft, uh, Bill Gates personally funded more than $5 million free. He gave it away, right? And then you see Udemy, Coursera, you see like so many things that, you know, sometimes that Divaka sent me that link. There are at least 10 or 15 of them that they are trying to create an un-college or un-school for that matter, right? Where they are trying to create a one school or one college kind of model where you go and pick and choose the components that you want to learn as tiny as possible, as bigger as possible whenever you want, wherever you want, right? And, and it's, is it, in US there is already statistics they are showing is a lot of people who are dropping out of school is also actually increasing. So in that sense, looking at something, there may be one best professor actually in IIT giving an excellent talk in physics, 
or theory of relativity wonderful and it's almost impossible for anybody to repeat that lecture anywhere but how are you going to make the person relevant for more than the few students sitting inside the four walls how are you going to take that skills to uh, you know millions of indians outside so in that sense without losing quality any thoughts of using and embracing technology or any other techniques so that actually we can drive towards quantity yes we do use technology also i mean <clears throat> for example as of now you go on youtube and then you can see a lot of nptel videos basically that's developed by the five or six institutions and then that's developed on each of these courses and then uh, it's put on the web etc now when do you use these courses khan academy or coursera mid stage of your career couple of years into the job when you actually find a problem that's when you go back to coursera and then you want to do a course when you are in the classroom do you see the relevance of it of the, any of these subjects need not be simple reason because when we compare again with what happens in the west as well as in india when you teach in the west i think sanjay would also agree with me when i was teaching an mba course in the west the average age of the class was 30 years when i teach here the average age is predominantly freshers or at the most one or two years of experience when i teach a class with about average age of 30 years he or she would have actually seen the problem they would try to relate it to theory then they would understand appreciate why is particular aspect is being taught or why a particular aspect is been discussed then they would sort of be able to appreciate that now here when i am teaching a fresher basically what happens they may not see the relevance of it immediately so when you basically see the relevance of it that is when you sort of go back and then you sort of do the online courses etc institutions are working on it but whether it is going to be effective for the people in the class i really doubt let me slightly rephrase also yeah. to please don't take it personally no. why should why should a student come to college seriously want to know the answer peer pressure no no i'm asking you know why specific benefits other than getting a degree right no i mean, I'm, i'm asking very so it's very clear i mean you can ask them why do they come to iit because iit will fetch me a I'll good give passport an, i'll give an example just for provocation and so on please no, don't no, take no, me wrong sure, sure. right there's a company called zogo started out of you know valacheri actually in 1994 i have done that i have experimented it right it may not be a scalable model for people like you know vipro and cognizant right it it worked for me actually um, and then you look at zogo uh, sridhar vembu mentioned it so many different times and he made a point made sure a point that he will not pick a graduate it's one uh, number one criteria in this hr model you went to the corporate schools few corporate schools in in uh, chennai and then he interviewed so many people and then finally he gave an offer for 100 people plus two students 30 people joined and today the 30 people are there actually there are some of them are vice president some of them are general managers product managers project managers and many of them actually has gone through a, a correspondence a course while working in zogo while making a money around close to 20000 rupees and so on so now coming back to the technology model where most of the technology that I'm today I'm talking about all us based either youtube or udemy or coursera you name anything it's us based so is it a threat for an education institutions in india right and you don't need 100 of them or 1000 of them you need only 10 of them and if all the 10 of them are coming out of us what's the danger so should be not only using youtube but should be also use some you know made in india online campus lakshman sorry the next sorry. company which i'm going to start soon you know in few oh, years okay. that, that hey, anybody is from infosys no no kidding. okay <laughs> they are listening uh, <laughs> it will be the qualification will be lkg at least zoho went for 12 standard oh my god okay. i am going to tell the reason can you just switch on to the ppt please uh, guys uh, absolutely zoho did a wonderful job of going to plus 2 students because i ran a business before i recruited engineers believe me within 3 months they will leave the job and then go for another job okay and then i started recruiting diploma guys and they still work okay i left Uh, i would like to show this simple formula uh, i am comfortable with ppt because i am from infosys and uh, you know it companies uh, <laughs> so uh, employability is a function of knowledge communication and attitude okay and most of the time 60% is uh, you know knowledge and then 20% communication and uh, 20% is attitude these are the things which we look for in any person when we recruit a person right okay uh, next slide <coughs> 
okay i'm going to talk only about uh, education uh, so knowledge about education yeah uh, no, no, no. Let us debate about this later. Uh, let's, I mean, let us have a hypothetical base. Uh, okay. Not hundred percent knowledge. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Next, next one. Uh, uh, see, knowledge comes from education, and uh, education system is responsible for the entire employability or whatever it is. And believe me, I am not going to blame the teachers because teachers are from the same education system. They are not to be blamed. And believe me, the educational institutions are also not to be blamed because they are not responsible. They. It is like you know, if I keep uh, selling pizza or burger, people like it, they want it, so they, I will sell pizza only, right? So they want to do it because people like it. Next one. Uh, and there is a uh, disclaimer here, I don't want to take any exceptions. You know, if I'm going to talk about education system in India, there are some exceptions to it. Like, I you know, agree. Steve Jobs is an exception, Microsoft Bill Gates is an exception. I we agree. should not say, hey, college, if you want to become a billion, become a college report. No. Okay, that is not the way to talk about it. So I'm talking about some colleges, I'm not going to talk about some colleges which are exceptionally good. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, if I say that, uh, you know, you may agree with me, when you enter into IIT, you may be the best guy. Okay, after entering the IIT, you may know that it is only the students who are best, not the teachers. Okay, I mean, uh, this is my perception. I may be wrong. It's a combination. <laughs> next, next, next. <laughs> no, no. Next. It's a combination. Okay, the, what does the current education system believe in? It believes in memorizing. Oh man, if you can memorize, you can you can get marks, you are a great guy, okay? It does not believe in one thing. Students can think, humans can think, okay? Why I'm saying this, I'm going to talk about this. Okay, if there are two persons, one is a robot, another is a uh, student. So including for your Great Lakes and your MBA, sir, okay? If I fetch all the data into robot, can it clear your exam or not? First class. Okay, first class, this pass, they'll clear, I mean, I'm not talking about distinction. I, I don't want robot to get distinction, okay? Can it pass the exam or not? Can it pass? In Great Lakes, it may be slightly difficult, okay? It depends. Uh, okay. Uh, I, still, I still remember that, you know, I had an interaction with some MBA guy. Uh, you know, uh, they are supposed to be good in statistics, especially the probability. They still do not know whether to multiply uh, two probabilities or add two probabilities. They will, it is like, you know, if you had read C or C++, you will put a white star and then, you know, uh, you will put ampersand uh, and then the variable name and then star variable name. And after some time, the compiler will throw errors and then finally you get the answer. You will put star uh, and then the variable name. So like that, you know, people will keep trying multiplication, division, everything, and then they will do this, even in big institutes, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you give an, uh, you know, uh, exam uh, to robot, it will also clear because it doesn't have to understand. So similarly, we are expected to be a robot rather than a, uh, you know, uh, normal human being. Excellent. Next one. Can come back next, later. Next, next. next I'll just discussion. quickly one finish yeah, sure. Okay. So institutes are liberal in marks. Please believe me, this is a shocking news for you. Okay. Why they are liberal? Because they want to show 100% pass. 100% pass, all when then pass and all, right? And uh, they say that if they make, you know, the students uh, get high marks, they say that the students are bright. And if I say the students are bright, the teachers are brighter, right? <laughs> And uh, finally, everything boils down to money, money, money. You know, you know what it means, right? Hostel fees, the capitation fees, everything boils down to money. And why do the students join the institute? You know, why do, why do, you know, he answered it very nicely. Why do they come to uh, IITs? Is it for knowledge? No, I'll get a fantastic job. Starting salary will be 25 lakhs per annum, passport. right? Absolutely. Passport. It's a passport. Exactly. Next one. Quick, quick. So answer key, see there is a, uh, you know, if, if you take many of the institutions, you know, they will go for an, uh, you know, when you write an exam, the teachers, evaluators will have an answer key. Okay, this answer key is for the teachers to correct the papers, there will be all the answers along with the guidance. Okay, just next time. So this is an example I just showed. Yeah, I want to tell you one thing, I see, you know, just one uh, pass then, because it's here, and the other day I actually went uh, actually to drop my son in, in the school, and uh, about half an hour before the exam started, like uh, he passed the 10th standard. And uh, I was in the car, you know, sitting and then I saw something like kind of a slogan. And teacher says that everybody retired, repeated it. It was like a slogan, it's like a nice to me because it's a little bit farther. Then I noticed they actually they're saying the one word answer question and the students are repeating the answer half an hour before the exam. Oh my God, you tell me, you know, how they cannot score like, you know, 100 out of, you know, 100. It's easy, That's I'll tell you. Mark, it's sorry, easy to get please. 100 out of 100. Next, next, next. So there was a question in physics. This is my physics professor experience. There was a question on short side and a long side, okay? People have to write. The guide said, if the student had written explanation in writing, give him full marks. 
or if they had drawn only the picture, please give them full marks. One student wrote the explanation correctly, but for the explanation, he, you know, for long sight, he drew the picture of short sight, and for short sight, he drew the picture of long sight, which means he didn't understand anything. But you know, he, he gave zero marks. Then the, there will be a central examiner. He came and said, no, no, this guy has drawn both the pictures. Give him 100 marks. Okay, 100 out of 100. Okay. So that is the kind of examination system we have. And believe me, to explain this, I have another, uh, just, like, just next, next slide. To understand this, uh, you know, who is father of India? Let us say this is the system in India. Okay. If somebody had written Indira Gandhi, like okay, <laughs> they'll definitely get 50% marks. You know why? <laughs> Gandhi is there, exactly. <laughs> Gandhi is there, they'll get 50% marks. Okay. And please believe me, the student need not understand father means he's a male guy. Okay. Indira Gandhi is a female. Okay. All these things they need not understand. Okay, if they write Gandhi somewhere, please give him 50 marks. It is there, right? It is in the key. So that is how the examination system is. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, no, I, I have put I mean, a disclaimer here for AD and uh, Great Lakes. Keep it that way, actually. But many institutes have this kind of thing. School. Okay. That to the school outside the urban area, actually. actually See, uh, once upon a time, it is very difficult to score 90 in Tamil or Hindi or any language paper. Now, today, people are scoring 100 out of 100 in Tamil. I don't understand it. Okay. <laughs> Max, I understand. 100 out of 100. Okay. But this is the kind of system we have because the key is very perfect, powerful, you know. Next one. Uh, current education system doesn't make a student think. Exams and marks reflect memorizing capacity. If you can memorize, if you, are, if you have a very good tape record in your brain, you will score 100 out of 100. If you come out of this, now if you join, okay, if you are asked a question, okay, can you please tell me uh, Newton's third law? People immediately tell, can you tell me, uh, you know, I still remember some of my friends memorizing uh, computer programs, okay, because they know for sure uh, only this particular program will come. And one, one guy, you know, by mistake, when he memorized, when he wrote the uh, answer sheet, uh, there must be a while loop and then there must be a statement inside it. By mistake, he, uh, you know, uh, interchanged it. Okay. He didn't compile. He was wondering multiple times, you know, uh, this, didn't, this really did happen. Okay. Why people memorize programs also? Can we memorize? They, are we, they are can we write programs from bottom up. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, why, why, do we, why does this happen? Because the education system thinks that you cannot think. People cannot think, student cannot think. Once they think that you cannot think, please memorize and then re reproduce. You will get excellent marks. So we are, we are playing a you know, uh, real game that you, know, uh, you say I am great by scoring marks and then you say you are great. So we, we, we praise each other and then nobody gains. This is the real state of education. See, we, see, we are talking about research and so many things. Let us say that you know, research comes on the second floor or third floor. Without the foundation being strong, how can you build the second floor, third floor, 15th floor? See, if America has had 200 floors or 100 floors building because the foundation is very strong. Here, people do not know anything about the basics. How can they go for the higher floors? Next. Thank you. Next, next. We'll, come back, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. Just have about a uh, couple of points. One in support of what Virupaksha said. I think I would like to quote what Professor C.N.R. Rao recently said in his uh, speech. He said, India has a very good examination system, not a very good education system. Exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, that is in support of uh, Mr. Rupaksha. Couple of things I would like to add now here. I mean, Mr. Lakshman, when he started, he said that between 2004 and 2011, it was a golden period for anybody graduating. They were all employed, etc. I mean, is it that the students who graduated in 2004 and 2000, between 2004 and 2011 were so brilliant that they were all employed and students who graduate now are unemployable? Absolutely. Or is it that we don't have opportunities to employ them? Where is the question? Exactly. Mm. And, that is the, and second thing, what Mr. Virupaksha said about uh, the examination system and we believe in memorizing and we don't allow students to think. That's a very good point. We don't allow students to think. But why? Because we don't allow students to think, because every parent wants his child or her child to follow the matrix that is clearly laid down by his seniors or his superiors or his cousins or his brothers or his sisters. Just follow that. I will just do this path and then I, I, I know I am going to what I am going to get. If I sort of crack JE, I am going to get into IIT. If I get into IIT, then I know I am going to do an MS in the US and then possibly settle on in Sinical Valley or maybe come back here or whatever it is. So, you have the path very clearly laid out. How many of us are willing to experiment with it? Forget about the students. How many parents are willing to allow their children to experiment? Exactly. See, actually, I mean, where is the problem? When I said, I said, I, when I started, I said, I'm going to address it from two issues. One is policy maker. Second is the individual. I'm talking about the individual aspect out here. 
I mean, we do not allow, because if you look at typically a JE coaching, uh, I mean, since we talked about IIT, I was sort of an examination in charge of one of the towns in Andhra Pradesh. Met a lot of students. They have never seen sunlight for three years. That is, they start by 5 a.m. in the morning, they go do their coaching, then their college, then their coaching, then they come back. They have not seen sunlight for two years, three years or something. Why? Because that kind, that is, because you want to go through, the, your children to go through the proven model, not allow them to experiment. That is where, because that is where the lack of thinking basically comes in from there. Excellent. Just one point to add. See, he's saying the individuals are responsible. I tell, no, no, individuals, uh, parents are responsible for our kids. You know, only if you study B.Tech, you will get into an IT company, right? See, once upon a time, you know, I still remember in 97 when I joined Infosys, Infosys was the only company which had all automobile engineers. By the way, I'm an automobile engineer from MIT, okay? Had I not been an automobile engineer, I would have joined Wipro or Cognizant or TCS. At the time, they were not allowing me to even write the test, okay? Because I got into Infosys, I got all the ease of and all other benefits, right? So, I'm just saying that Infosys was the only company which said, you need not have seen a computer. In the campus interview, they said, you need not have seen a computer, we will train you, okay? If a company can, if a big company can, you know, uh, you know can say that, you need not be any graduate, 12th standard, even 5th standard, okay? And then they give excellent salary. Believe me, none of the parents will say that, you know, I want you to be in IIT. So I don't think that is actually, I mean, that's, I'm saying that is the right thing to have, but ideally what will happen is the startups will actually hire non-graduates and they will become big, they create a trend, but whatever is working for them, why should they experiment with something which is not working? If somebody is like smooth, why will they fix it? But in reality, the transformation has already started happening. I mentioned like Zogo and many other startups are already talking about it. That will create an opportunity for people not going to school, but still you can make your salary. And we'll come back to Jayashree, I think now you can continue your thoughts about... Uh, yeah, actually, I have a way for Jayashree because I think uh, the point that he made and Arun made, uh, I'll just give an anecdote. When I first went to the US for my, uh, my first semester of the PhD seminar, the faculty asked us to write a, a critique of a research paper. So, you know, very Indian style, I gave him a perfectly written pressy, a perfectly written summary. He called me to his office and he told me that you are going to get an F. And I was shocked. You know, I said, why can, how, why should I get an F? I mean, this is as good as it comes. He said, I know, but it's a summary. I wanted you to write a critique. And believe me, uh, despite being a postgraduate, it took me quite a while to understand the difference between a summary and a critique. But you know, this uh, box issue that uh, we have this uniform system which doesn't allow you to think. Uh, it's one is a legacy, but I think there is an issue here also of numbers. Uh, you know, Jayashree can possibly expound much better on than, than me on this. Uh, if you are suppose a TCS or a Cognizant, you are hiring 25,000 engineers a year. How much time, time can you spend in recruiting or trying to find out the behavioral aspects of each of them? How much time actually do you, can you spend, right? Uh, in uh, rather in deciding to select, typically you are going to go for some kind of a standardized metric. And as soon as the students or whoever is the potential employee realizes what metric you use, it can be a test, it can be your marks, whatever it is, that's exactly what they're going to do. That's how the game is played everywhere. I mean, you cannot run an assessment, you know, three-day long assessment center for uh, uh, 50,000 engineers to select 20,000 out of them. So I think in the Indian context, it's of course our mindset and so on, but at the same time, I think numbers to a great extent uh, have played a role in terms of our being able to try out different approaches which are non-standardized, let me put it that way. You know, much more tailored to uh, individuals, whether it's in recruitment, whether it's when we educate, uh, typically when I have taught in the US, I would start screaming if a class size were greater than 35. Here if I do a class size of 35, I'll lose my job. <laughs> They'll say you are unproductive and you know, you are just... So, you know, I would just uh, give it to Jayashree too. Jayashree. You are absolutely right in, sir, in telling that, you know, num numbers really play a major role in the way we, we really box ourselves, right? 
Uh, so let me come back to that in a little bit. But I would stay with Virupakshan in really questioning the fundamentals, right? I don't want to lose my thought. So, uh, you know, on an average, right, one fourth of every individual's life in any, in a given system, you know, is spent in academics, right? In, it, it is spent in education. We all know that. We all go through that, right? 20 years, 25 years, whatever. You may want to keep that. It is all spent in studying, in reading. You can't get away from that. Now, yeah, so what is the key attribute to uh, education system? You know, you can call learning, researching, right? I'm talking about the key fundamentals here. Learning, researching, reflecting, conversing, dialogues, right? Sharing things. So if you actually think about it, it is a key commitment, right, for an individual to actually you know, share his views, share the knowledge with, with another person. And that is typically what is essential, essentially need to be coming from an education system. What is the core pillar here? The core pillar is being very open, right? Being with teaching openness, being very open to, you know, ideas, sharing it, learning it. Do we, the hard question for all of us is do we really teach that? Are we open to that? Do we have the core values in the education system? I know academicians are there, right? So I think it is a very fundamental core thing that we all need to question. And I'm talking about the ecosystem, right? It is the consumer and the provider, right? As an individual, as a parent, we all play different roles. Are we really allowing the openness to happen, right? Goes back to the number thing. I also want to connect it back to the slide that you had presented, right? Which is, you know, empty thinking and experiencing are the actually answers to how you can make a better world, right? In the given scenario, I would, I would not agree more than what Virupakshan told, right? Robo, ch child, go to an LKG, what not. We don't really allow the thinking to happen. We are boxed in terms of numbers. And I think it is a question for all of us. Now as an individual, I don't know what I can think more than this. But numbers, yes, really are there to play. As an organization like ours, going back, right, we definitely are already thinking about the behavioral aspects. So if you have a predictive model which actually says that, hey, these institutions in, the, in, in, in Tamil Nadu, right, who we have recruited, how are they really performing in the organization after six months, after one year? Do we have a model? Do we have a magic pill to get that information? No, we don't have. But we are thinking on those lines, right? Thank you. So I'll just leave it there. So now we'll open up to the audience. Uh, Question. I'll come back. Wonderful. Through yeah. yeah. Just one comment and uh, deeper question or thought. Deeper question. <laughs> you want to have the mic? Can you shout a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> no, you need to be a politician. <laughs> Indian higher education system, against whatever we are uh, talking about, is delivering what it is designed to be delivered. Designed to be delivered, okay. It was designed for, for uh, uh, higher enrollment. It was designed for higher P number of PhDs. It is getting designed for higher number of PhDs. It is designed for number of degrees. Not for competence. And uh, um, so, if that is the objective of the design, then we could worry about why it is not delivering that. It was not an objective of the design to create competence. So that's where the policy maker he was talking about, he can go yeah, back and redesign the thing, right? I don't want to stop there. Okay. Policy maker, we are not policy makers, it's very easy to but put. Uh, you can be the influencers. Uh, where uh, um, things can change and it does change, as one of you pointed out is, like for example, uh, our educational system may say, Bulk recruiters want easy uh, way of filtering and so they would have to say 80% score in your university. Mm. <laughs> if suppose there's one company which comes and says, this is a measure of competence that reflects on your job. You choose this. Of course, many of the companies will choose to do it and it is choosing to do that. For example, there are, has come right out one, but it has not been successful yet on that. There's one company um, which is uh, which gave all the statistics of employability that we are talking about called aspiring employees from uh, one from IIT alumni and one from MIT alumni. They designed a GRE GMAT type 
computer adaptive test mechanism which tests computers. And uh, people scoring on that uh, will get a job. A student wants mark because he wants a job at the end of it. So if, if you give him a proper assessment system which tests competence, he will build competence in short. And it does happen. And we are talking about um, many, uh, say US, many, many of them are coming and delivering uh, using technology. We don't have to compete with them, we can use them to start with. We can use their knowledge. Not, I mean, we, can, uh, we have a huge uh, I mean, requirement of quality knowledge which is available partly from NPTEL and from Coursera, MIT and all that. The thing is, let us stand up and say that we are technology people, we have to start making use of it to deliver quality education to those 5 lakh engineering students in Tamil Nadu. We are not doing that. So the problem is, we are not as much committed as we should be, we are just talking superficials. So one hit on the design, another hit on myself because I am not doing enough to make use of the existing resources that we already have. We have solutions, we have technology, we are not committed enough to solve the problem. Solve the problem, interesting. What is your question sir? thought which I wanted to share. Sure. My thought will be contrary to what the panelists Doesn't mind, better. <laughs> I thought of uh, giving a thought which is contrary to what is being discussed. Might be I wanted to go back to pre-independence area or post-independence area. I feel that as a country we have matured and come a long way. Where we didn't have children or parents. My father was wants to go, walk 25 kilometers to go to a school. But uh, whereas we have improved to a certain extent that Every village boasts of engineering college or one of the best institutions. It is because of two things. One is the middle class has grown and the economy has developed very well. Where everybody wants to aspire from one class of uh, level society to get to the next class of society. But what was the best mode for this? The best mode was to ensure that student gets into school first. Government was coming out as a scheme to pull students to school like Satunavutitam or whatever is that which came in. That was one of the earliest stages. Now we are maturing at a stage where our society is now, we are thinking of knowledge society. Like where was a community like this earlier or something like that. And politicians saw, or majorly, because the colleges or institutions are run by majority of politicians across engineering college or something, they saw a big buck in this when the economy grew. Thanks to them that we have a lot of infrastructures towards the uh, this society. I feel, and now if you see the recruitment pattern, of the uh, all the IT companies, they are moving from to getting into knowledge uh, consulting or something where they want students to be more of thinkers and all that stuff. But we are speaking at this juncture because we have grown up to this level and we have fueled more money into the system. Otherwise, we will not have this much of institutions or something. But one way this system has provided to this extent for us to develop and showcase our society in the next level. Might be next level we are going up into this thinking of researchers or thinkers or whatever is not. <coughs> if you look in, once we mature to this level, if you see the German industry or anywhere, any CEO if you look in, any company of a Germany or anybody will have more of PhD as a CEO or something. But we are not moved to that level. Might be this system has supported us to get into this level. Might be going on forward, we will get into more of entrepreneurs, but more of this thing because do, this do you system think it's moving in the right direction. I feel you mentioned about PhD. I know yeah. about the PhD. I have yeah. similar thoughts. It's uh, we are getting a lot of PhDs, but are we moving in the no, right direction? What I'm moving is this system has provided even a sweeper or even anybody to open up and make that. Let us get into IIT. Let okay. us get into bigger institutions. We had our uh, one of the entrepreneurs in Chennai, Idli King Company person, who was whose uh, mother was just a person who was working in a low class profile. But this system has provided them to aspire, to grow. Maybe we feel this is a good system to come in, but from now on we should think on which system will support us Better. to get in more PhDs. As long as we are not the prisoner of the old thoughts, yes. I mean, that's the dangerous part. One more question and then we'll continue. The, and, and yeah, come back. I think just if I can play a bit. You know, you are right. Technology is, the, the issue of technology is that technology is an enabler. Uh, if you ask, you know, ask our IIT, we are Great Lakes. The, so-called, you know, institutions of the top of the heap in a way, they are using technology quite extensively. When you look at it, the issue is the trickle down hasn't happened. That is one part. Uh, the second thing I think, which is an issue, uh, which I think, you know, all of you would be familiar with. A lot of Indian companies, the large ones, right, they have got 
uh, to train their own employees in house online systems and repositories of knowledge which are excellent i am saying this because i know about it on the other hand if you ask them to come out and share it uh, for competitive reasons or whatever they won't now the thing is look uh, it's it's a question of who does it benefit in the sense that uh, i know the companies invest a whole lot of things in creating these kinds of system these kinds of knowledge bases to train their employees and so on okay there are there are issues of proprietary knowledge and so on but at the same time i'm sure that there are certain things which can be shared uh, rather than keep on blaming educational institutions that okay why don't you guys go ahead and do it uh, that's uh, one part but i think you know to say what sridhar has said i think we have become a little too obsessed about this whole issue about knowledge society where does it say that 1.2 billion people have to be knowledge society what for i think you know this whole issue of uh, everybody have, having been a graduate or uh, wanting to be engineer doctor whatever it is this is obsession about uh, being graduates or uh, even if they are useless skills or an institution which simply doesn't work just gives away a paper degree that has become more valuable than uh, you know in our mindset uh, than being actually whether it's teaching you anything useful at all employability is no longer important because the thing is when you look at it the numbers that you know mr pillai started with if 10% of people are doing are employable as far as mbas are concerned how is that 2 lakh people are taking cat this is crazy i mean if there is some you know a issue some disconnect between or contradiction between aspirations and the ground reality of it i think you know that's also an issue that we all need to look at let's open up when two more students in in a listening quietly and, no, and they, they are the ones i know <laughs> I, before coming into that i'll to uh, i should and come see uh, 2004 actually somebody invited me i don't want to mention the campus in us uh, sorry in bangalore uh, uh, you know brand new you know business school yeah, uh, you know discussed about curriculum change in 2004 actually i told them that i am not an expert in marketing i'm not an expert in financial management and so on but i said that for no matter which discipline that you are in there are three important thing that i want you to introduce in the curriculum the one is mind mapping the other one is six thinking hats the third one is uh, uh, you know steven covey's uh, you know seven habits of highly people as uh, effective people right and you put these things first then you put anything on top i think the retention quality will be lot better and the behavior will be lot better because i know in 1992 i read uh, you know steven covey's you know seven think uh, mixed up right seven habits of highly effective people that's a one book that i read few times and also but so many books and donated to my friends and so on that's a one book it's so simple and common sense i do think this kind of a base let's not worry about the discipline it's, there are experts talking about that do you think as a student you need something the non technical you know kind of courses that you require for an mba or even for be so that they can broaden their thinking and then they can actually learn more yeah i think it's very very essential and we do have such kind of courses as part of our curriculum now itself Excellent. and a lot of uh, schools are talking about it so it's very much essential and we do have it so maybe they don't spell out explicitly saying that uh, you know our brochure doesn't say that this is going to be offered but it's very much a part and at least one such course in each trimester is offered and it's doing a lot of good and of what, what do you think sir yeah um, such courses do exist this year onwards uh, iit madras has started a course called life skills which is uh, compulsory for all the first year students and um, like i'm the teaching assistant for that course and i have gone through the classes like it's wonderful i believe it should be there i mean i wish i was a part of it when i was in the first year but uh, what i uh, what my concern is the students are very well uh, capable of bifurcating these two things and keeping them separate say when i'm going to the life skills i'll get into that uh, mode i'll listen to it i'll probably learn some things but when i get back to my books that is my major i'll be back to my own ways i'll give you this example multiple personality <laughs> exactly i'll give you this example you know one day before the exam we have a tutorial which obviously i wouldn't have solved before i'm a typical iit and ptech student so i'll just start solving the 10 questions i'll probably be able to solve eight of them i wouldn't get the two i'll try and solve them ask my friends i wouldn't understand because uh, next morning at 8 in the morning i have my exam 
I'll just have a look at the solutions, mark it up. Yes, we are still talking about the one of the best engineering colleges in the country. One more question for the student, actually, want specifically. To add to yeah, sure. One. Uh, I completely agree that we have different priorities with respect to these two subjects and it of course again boils down to what uh, Professor uh, Sanjay Sikha mentioned, it's about what the employer wants. At the end of the day we will try to mould ourselves in that direction because as students we simply want a good job. So if the employer comes out, I'm, I'm hoping all employers are listening to it, that uh, with saying that we are going to give more emphasis on communication. We jolly will do it. So it's only from the. Yeah, please. Yeah. Once again, uh, let. Exactly on this point. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about the. We've been talking about education for employability. But what is the purpose of education? Is it only employ employability? The purpose of education is to create a, a good citizen. That's what the education is for in the society. And how do we bring this? Actually, I was talking to Jayshree. I think some of the points which she mentioned has some elements in that. Uh, I was, uh, before the session started, I was talking to her. In India, the employers themselves don't know what to expect out of the institutions. Because, as she rightly said, if, she had play, if I had known that the employer wants this, they want communication skills, all employed, we are all from corporates, we evaluate what is called, the, we have a framework called the performance management system. We have two axes. One is what of the performance and the how of the performance. The how of the performance is exactly what she's saying and that's a life skills course. What happens in engineering institutions, one semester or the last semester around the time when the companies come, the life skills uh, are taught. People are brought from outside, correct me if I'm wrong, people are brought from outside, hired from outside, different agencies come in, chip in, each one is made to pay compulsorily 5,000, 10,000 rupees depending upon the institutions and depending upon the, uh, the, the uh, uh, urbanization. So they will charge and then the life skills are that, that becomes one element of it in, an, in, an, in a hope that the industry will buy that. And the industry comes in, looks at different, as he rightly said, how, many, how much of time do they, do you know how much of time these IT companies spend in the personal interview, which the HR does, less than 5 minutes. I'm coming out of a recent statistics which I've discussed with my daughter. Average, From you coming. take the average. So they recruit the average, see, because yeah, the numbers average. are more. I don't blame them. They use a different metrics. They're thinking their metrics from the expectations from the industry is very different. The institutional, uh, you know, the professors think uh, they, 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 they interact with different uh, sets of people, groups of people, passes out each year and that keeps changing. The situation is dynamic. Each one doesn't understand the other. All these things get coordinated only when they get recruited. When you go for a, a training program, you inject them and during that time you uh, emphasize all this and then you said, oh, industry, uh, the, uh, the uh, students coming out of the college are not employable. They will never be employable and because you have never stated the expectations. Can I, can I just add a point? Sure. of this percentage. Okay. I find, I am, to my, what I guess is, probably these percentages are given to make the freshers think this is what is you should expect and nothing more. I, it's simply not possible to correctly figure that it is 10% Not correctly, yeah, but see, yeah. Yeah. Number one. NASCON says 25%. What no, no, how did they get with these numbers? No, those All these numbers are, huh? are available. No, but. I mean, how, how do they find it? Is there a method by yes, which they will have told? Yes, 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 but again, 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 one more thing. We talk about uh, memory. Education, we say that it makes uh, people good in, good in memorizing things. Number two, good at uh, exam writing. Probably it makes Indians target-oriented. See the positives of what the education system does. It makes Indians target-oriented. There are a lot of positions where memory is very useful, actually. Uh, probably that is why when you are talking about employability, how many employees no, actually are, are not employees really are saying this or that. Actually. If you talk about employability, you have to take that percentage. How many employees after getting recruited or failures after the first year or the second year or the third year? You say that all IT companies, uh, in fact, I have seen a lot of this employability <coughs> problem uh, conferences in most of the second tier and the third tier colleges. This is the first time I am seeing this discussion going on in a first tier environment. Okay, you got my point. Hmm. So this probably is an issue which I, this is very curious to why this is this one point where I am very curious. Why it is coming into the first tier uh, 
uh, employability issue also. Yeah, yeah. but no, one more minute. I think we have uh, running out of time. One thing what I was thinking is, no, when you're talking you about memory, the useful of usefulness yeah. of memory, there are a lot of questions. You say most of the companies do not want, uh, they, are, they are able to train people as soon as they get in. Okay, most of the IT companies. So right from 2000 onward, this scenario, IT companies have made a lot of difference in the education system. It doesn't matter what you really learn in the college, you come to us, we will anyway train you and you will be useful to us. So if this is the condition, what is the incentive for a student to really learn? The student does not bother to learn in the college time. He knows very well that if he passes the finishing school, he will be ready for the interview and he will pass through the interview and get into a college, but they will anyway train them. So the student is not ready to learn. The teacher is also not bothered because he also knows the, anyway the placement is what is important. All colleges concentrate only on the placement. They are ready to give the placement figures, they get their captation fees or whatever. So the college is also not interested, student is also not interested. HR is also happy, he is having his training budget and he is happy to... So uh, we have a bigger problem one. right now, it's there interesting. There is a status quo actually. Okay. <laughs> it is like as a holistic problem, right? <laughs> interesting. So, yeah, your question. You want a mic? Uh, he was, I just want to ask for only one point. One point, yeah. The memory part of it. See, uh, I am actually doing... Right now, I am not even working as a very senior... Uh, but I'm also a student in the law school of business where the company has uh, you know, given a leadership program, uh, uh, deputed me for a leadership program. It's a three-year MBA course. It is at this stage I even, I'm able to reflect and think what we went through is all nonsense and what real teaching is, that, like you mentioned, the US schools, there's a lot of difference in teaching and the methodologies that they adopt and how you relate it to the work situation. As uh, uh, one of the panelists mentioned, no, the minimum age level at the business school in the West is 30. It's very rightly, unless you get to know certain things, because I know for sure my own colleague who was who's from IIT Chennai and I am Ahmedabad, who's got about even two years more experience than me, says many things I read in IIM without even knowing what I was reading. So, I, I mean, even he, when a person at that level makes a statement and after attending this, there's a clear distinction between the memory helps you. But in India, the unfortunate thing is, you know, one of the uh, professors made a mention, you Indians are very good in maths, but you run too much into the figures, leaving the macro level, leaving the big picture. Excellent. Yeah, one, thank you. You know, this is, uh, memory does help. Of course, it does help. But, but you can't you know, completely depend on that. Memory. You can't completely depend on that, sir. What's your question? So, it's more, more, more than a question. I mean, I just found a connecting thread with a, lo with a lot of things. Absolutely, things. yeah. It's all <laughs> So... At least in my opinion, uh, uh, he was asking about uh, what is education and there were questions about how I am a student of IIT Madras, so I can speak from a student's perspective. There's, there's a, the connecting thread which I feel is in India from a very young age, there is a lot of restrictions on students. I mean on as children when you grow up, you are beaten up, don't do this, don't do that. I mean the children are not given respect and I find the most important thing is we are not trained to make decisions from a very young age. If I have to answer your question, why YouTube is from America, why Microsoft is from America, it's not because of we don't have brains, but we are not trained to think independently, we are not trained to make decisions from a very young age. There's somebody out there sitting saying, no, don't do this, it's wrong. This is right, this is wrong. I mean, what's the whole point? Let people make decisions, let the kids make decisions, let them go wrong. And then they learn how Absolutely. to correct it. And Absolutely. I find this is something which is lacking in our culture for quite a long time. Absolutely, totally agree with you. I would like to share just what my experience. Please. Uh, that I am also a student of IIT Madras. I am computer science engineer. Uh, so one day I came uh, from my college and I found that there is no light in my room. And that is gone trip. And my father came from office and he told that if you can't repair the views and all those things, you, are, you should be ashamed to be an engineer. You know how to change. I am not an engineer, but I know how to change all those things. <laughs> and uh, I am very inspired that uh, from my class 8, when the chemistry started, he bought all uh, alkali and uh, acid and he showed me all the exper experiment that how the reaction would be. Okay, Madam, uh, just one, one quick second. point. In, uh, in education system, my professor says, Anathan says, uh, engineers know how a machine works. Okay, A mechanic knows how to work it. So, which is an important, say if an electronic guy comes, you do not know, an electronic engineer may not know how to repair a TV. He will call a mechanic, please repair the TV. If he is an electronic engineer from IIT, he should do it by himself. If he cannot do it, absolutely no point in, uh, you know, uh, having this education. Yeah, that's my father also don't. I think everyone should follow this.
and one final answer to this you know why don't people go for uh, you know uh, no, running out of time please yeah, i will come back running an electrician because they are not paid you know, well that's one answer we'll come back sir, sorry one point i want to make sir one second i'll come back huh? very very come back in the final see this one i just make it as a point i wanted to ask question because running out of time so i'm not going to ask anybody so just as leaving as a thought and uh, sometime back there was a, a ntv dialogue uh, where chetan bhagat mentioned that you know let make our education as a business when already people are sending in you know, a 30 billion dollars to you know overseas let at least bring that money back into our country is just a, you know food for thought let's uh, we can't we don't have time to get into so one more question and then we'll wrap up Huh? Sorry? Yeah? He says it needs to be legalized. Which one? <laughs> yeah, fine. I mean, so you have a government thing which offer for like you, Singapore, right? If it's a government thing, you know, you make it cheap, you pick, right? I come from government uh, school, right? 12 years, I was like born and brought up in a government school. I was paying only 6 rupees or 5 rupees or 3 rupees when I started. And maybe even free during my first standard and things like that. So let's not get into the debate. I think let parents choose whether they want to send them to a, you know, um, you know, a government school or a Uh, high five schools like where they spend like you know 50 lakhs or something like that let them decide right but the only thoughts i'm not saying whether it's for or against when this much of money is going outside it means this 30 billion dollars adding to a current account deficits otherwise the current account deficit could be like much lower than you know 70 billion dollars at least bring that money back into our country sorry uh, quick question can you please go to the ranking page i have some question right no make it question okay. yeah, yeah can you please go i have a point to make a ranking word institute ranking <laughs> um, before that uh, uh, this is the one right yes. this is the ranking yes sir yeah yeah but the, my point is that you look at the second last and third last uh, ranking criteria international student score international faculty scores international faculty score last year iit madras got 2 marks out of 100 that is government decision whether the faculty will be international or national international students iit madras last year got zero marks because iits are made for indians we have only exchange students now look at how iit can come in top 100 this it's a policy issue it's it's the criteria okay. issue exactly. so um, just i want to uh, make people aware that it's not iit's fault that iit doesn't come in 100 or iit im doesn't come look at this criteria <laughs> I I I miss I appreciate the politician he, he went into depth to look at the <laughs> look at the criteria I, I went through marks La, last year IIT Madras got 36 marks for the research let one let me complete sir please 36 marks for research we need to improve that we got 86 marks for academic reputation it was much beyond m- many of the ivy leagues so it's not only the fault of our education system or this this criteria if we score much and if their universities go behind this criteria might change also sir and after sir cv raman in india in 1930s or so hmm. india has never produced any nobel laureate okay there are so many phd's from iits tell me which I have phd from iit got a nobel laureate nobel prize fine did you get a nobel prize fine sir follow chat one You no, know, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss they it. They uh, I mean, see, I think he brought in a bring in an excellent point. Let's start. No, my, my point is please. whether the PhDs are made to get Nobel laureates. That's yeah. the p- fundamental question. Whether the purpose of PhD is to get Nobel laureates or whether one should start research to get Nobel laureates. Problem here, we don't understand our purpose. That's the biggest problem. The excellent. second, the p- I wanted to make aware of the audience that, that the it's not Indian universities' fault only. there's uh, some of the issues which are macro issues which need to be dealt second thing about uh, expected as a student now that uh, if suppose i i'm doing phd now suppose a btech guy iit btech or any engineering college he wants to get a job when the cv goes or suppose a normal engineering college you are not talk- because his disclaimer is that he is talking about normal not exceptional suppose i didn't get job in campus i upload cv in infosys or cognizant if i don't have 75% in first year second year third year fourth year there is less chance that i will not get unless i mug i get that marks there is no question of learning there no question learning is never tested in indian system so how somebody will blame only educational systems then third point when i get a job how many of you are asking for what purpose you got job what is your profile first question i encounter is what is your package 
<laughs> no, for the same reason I said when I start a company, I will recruit LKG guys Great. who have Thank learnability. You. So let's no, no. Lap, so wrap up. No. I'll no, make a suggestion. Up, see, once India will change no, no. in such a let's way that people will look for learnability and learning skills than degree or marks. Okay. The day is not uh, far away. Great. Hey, thank you, Shaptadri. Actually, I didn't give much justice. Like, you know, I, you know, you had very little time to say something. But what I would suggest, like, you know, after I quickly wrap up, because we're already we're running out of time, very quickly, five points I'm going to wrap up. After that, you know, please stay uh, outside as much as possible. Catch out of these people, catch out of him, whoever it is you want. <laughs> please, you know, discuss as much as possible, right? There's a food court, you know, next to it, right? I, because of the sticking to the punctuality, like I would like to quickly wrap up, you know, sorry. Very quick points. What is the origin of job creation? Right? Now, if you all believe that in everything that is IT driven job, well, who actually influences the IT driven jobs? Only because of the IT driven jobs, it creates a 10 another jobs. That's what Nand uh, Mr. Narayan Muthi says. Right? It's not like one. So, if the bank, you want to become an MBA graduate, so you want to go and join bank, it's because of the IT people making money, they want to go and deposit in bank or invest, whatever it is. Just give me one example, there are so many, you know, it's a very complicated issue. So, now if that guy says no, what is our state? If you can give the entire plug to that guy, whoever that guy is, the you know, president of America, the entire plug, whether he can switch on or switch off, is bigger than or worse than a nuclear bomb. Keep that in mind. Sometimes, everything can be business creations here. I'm not saying that go back to Moraj I don't like Moraj Desai. But at the same time, I don't want to be the weaker guy in that bigger ecosystems. Right? Only the strength respect. Strength. Right? Only the power can negotiate with another power. Right? If you don't have the power, believe me, you cannot negotiate. Your life is your destiny. Your life is under the control of somebody. They don't have the passion for your country and my country that we live in. Keep that in mind. That means that is the domestic jobs made in India products, right? Domestic ecosystems, you know, domestic in you know, a local online virtual campus, right? Local innovation, local everything you bring in, then you create a strength. Then I think nobody will bully you. Otherwise, everybody will come near the border. Very simple thing that we consume so much of this, we waste so much of this particular components. Let it be a smaller device to a bigger device. Believe me, not even a single unit in India to extract gold out of this waste. We ship tons and tons of this electronic waste to Singapore, Japan and other countries. They make billions of dollars, huge dollar. I don't know exactly how much it is to extracting gold out of this. So, if an I, I am not referring to the IIT, if an Indian graduates, I mean, in engineering graduates, they cannot come out with a model, viable model, to do such kind of business, then what are we really talking about when we talk about the perspective of education? Of course, I cannot have any slides without this guy, right? And, and one other person, right? Right? So let's all the way you connecting the dots from policy maker to professors to you know politicians to parents. I I don't know how many of you know you know uh, you know Tamil there is the movie like you know it's Nayagan when daughter goes and change apa maranga please change. Aungla marachula na mara. Ask them to change then I will change. Everybody will become a mafia, believe me, if we don't have a self-realization and self-consciousness to change. When there are so many young, I don't know, they're politically correct to make the statement, that when there are so many young lovers, they escape their parents to get married. And if they have the same passion to escape from their parents, uncles and sisters and brothers, the entire family, if they continue to believe that entrepreneurism is work for them, let them escape, go and prove, come back and join their family. Let's not blame the parents. No matter how many more years, this guy will be remembered. 
unless otherwise we boost up our self esteem and self respect right to create a self sufficiency and sustainable self sufficiency then you go back and negotiate with another people till such time the indian passport will not be treated like an american passport the american dog will come here without going through a security check and abdul kalam will go to america with completely stripped off security checks we must become powerful now all this thing connecting the dots if you touch one thing if i don't care about if i start an industry if i start something without uh, worrying about environment you know what this is this is actually a lake it's actually a river or a lake actually in indonesia can you see that can you see a water a drop of water i've seen the same th same thing and actually is um, munar something similar is not that was now if you can destroy the entire ecosystem and education got the power to bring it back or the education got the power to completely demolish the whole thing because when you are completely dependent on the jobs right out of america and they will have the plug and if you don't do what they are asking you to do they will pull up the plug and send the you know connections send the money to uh, china or indonesia or some other country or philippines or some other uh, you know a south african african countries and we will be in a very very disastrous situation so make sure that we have to take responsibility to completely change it let's not worry about who should change first who should change next let everybody has to think that it has to be changed improved and i have heard so many things about and everything he you know dr sanjay is also clearly mentioned about it right life cannot be you know whole thing cannot be revol revolve around the marriage the wedding is a one event could be however important event it may be right it's a one event and your entire love, you know life cannot be revolve around that particular one event and you will have a life you need to survive and you are going to deliver a baby and that baby need to get an employment right for which at least for your own baby you have to live beyond your huh rings final slide go back to the nature right understand nature where everything is so dependent right water cannot go and tell the tree you know you grow first then only i will support, support you right right and you can't go and tell the things you know ask that person to pull, you know you know take out that mineral water bottle or a junk or a you know plastic bottle then i will go and pick you know sometime back when i brought my son you know, when he came back from you know india i think when i was in singapore my son was actually only one and a half he hardly walk right and uh, we went to a marriage you know you know <laughs> wedding ceremony where there is normally they'll give a thank you card with the chocolate pinned on it everybody will take the chocolate and throw both the thank you card and the chocolate wrapper right we'll see the most of the cases i was standing in a corner one corner of the you know um, uh, marriage hall and my son is walking like this running almost like pick out one wrapper came put it in one box went to the other one pick out the second one put it in the box he was doing it for like a few minutes then i saw like you know 20 30 papers in the thing now of course he has the indian gene indian gene right uh, you know i can be sure <laughs> he got the indian you know gene right and how he is able to do that and the same son he did a, you know a, you know 10th exam you know few months back the last one he just passed out you know what i told him everybody was supporting in you know, my relatives are saying please send him to rasipuram where it's like a factory you get up at 5 o'clock sleep at 10 in between every single second not even a single minute every single second is under the control of the teacher 5 to 15 do this 5:15 to 5:20 do this 5:20 to 25 do this this sleep now wake up boom 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 it's like a prison put it in a box assembly line when they come back most of the people they will be like you know out of the entire you know state they are the top scorers you know i said what i will never make that mistake i told my son he asked me apa you send me to hostel because i wasting a lot of time traveling in this one wasting me to i said i'm not going to put you in a hostel period don't even ask me right is not something negotiable is a non negotiable i am not going to put you in hostel i don't care if you fail i don't care if i my relatives was like looking at me like are you a what who are you kind of thing i said if you think and score as much as possible don't worry about we fail or whatever marks i am not going to blame anything but be a good better human being be a capable person 
to survive and to help others. With the thoughts, I will leave here. Thank you so much for you know, all the opportunity. I would like to thank the entire panelists. This discussion should continue and we have to do great wonders. Thank you. So thank you, Lakshman, very much. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, panelists. And uh, this program has been arranged in a last moment. And uh, thank you, Great Lakes Institute and uh, IIT Madras, as well as uh, Jayashi and Virupakshi for accepting this invite. Uh, so thank you so much. Now I invite uh, Sukumar to give us a moment to the panel members. So Lakshman Pillai. <laughs> Yeah. And to, uh, this month is September, Teachers Month, so we also thank uh, <laughs> this occasion. <laughs> uh, thank you everyone and uh,